Today I'll try to help you decide whether you should upgrade coming from the DJI Avata 1 to the brand new DJI Avata 2. Let's get started. The Avata 2 has just been announced and I have a lot of things to say about this drone so if you're curious about all the features, all the improvements that the Avata 2 brings then go ahead and watch my full review of this drone. It will be linked down in the description but today it's all about this comparison right here the Avata 1 versus the Avata 2. Should you upgrade if you already have the Avata 1 to the Avata 2? Let's find out by starting with the camera specs first. So here we are seeing a big upgrade when it comes to the camera. The DJI Avata 1 had a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor which was a little bit controversial because many people used to put a, an additional contraption here on top of the battery which holds an additional action camera because they were not happy with the image quality that the Avata was giving them. This kind of defeats the purpose of having a small cine, cine whoop like this because you are already, um, you know, kind of limited by the performance of the motors with such a heavy quad uh, being about 400 grams with the battery. And when you put an additional weight with the action camera, then this drone starts to feel very sluggish. It, the performance just drops significantly. So uh, it wasn't ideal. And this is what DJI has come out with. This is a one over 1.3 inch sensor, which uh, is very similar, if not exactly the same as the sensor that we have on the DJI Osmo Action 4. It's a massive upgrade in terms of performance, in terms of low light capabilities, in terms of just straight out of the camera picture that you can use. And of course, it also brings additional features such as D-Log-M as opposed to d cine like uh, flat color profile that we have on the original Avata. So that brings you a lot more capabilities to color grade the footage and extract a lot more out of it since this is a 10-bit footage uh, with D-Log-M color profile. It's a lot flatter, it retains a lot more information and it's a lot easier to get those dynamic, vibrant and contrasty shots with this drone as opposed to the shots with the Avata 1. So let's just say you won't be needing to put an additional action camera on top of this one because it's that good and if you know how to color grade you will be golden. Don't worry though if you don't know how to color grade I have some lots available for the Avata 2. They will enable you to color grade your footage in a matter of seconds by just dragging the LUT on top of your footage and then simply adjusting a few things might not even be needed, so make sure you check the link down below if you want to quickly color grade your flat color profile footage coming from the Avata 2. But even if you don't want to shoot in the flat color profile, there is still a significant difference in the footage that comes straight out of the SD card of both of these drones. The Avata 1 gives you a very punchy footage, but it lacks dynamic range, and you can definitely see that in shots where you have a lot of sunlight coming straight from the sun and then you lose detail in the shadows because the, the capabilities of the sensors are just not there. And when it comes to the Avata 2, we can see a clearly very different image. We have a lot more dynamic range because of that larger sensor size. We can use that sensor size to, to fly later at, uh, at maybe even at night or just before uh, the sunset uh, completely fades away all the light around you. You can extract a lot more out of this sensor because it's just larger and it retains a lot more information. Now, when it comes to the drones themselves in terms of size and weight, we can definitely see that there is a big difference between them. Now, this drone actually is bigger, uh, but even though it is bigger, it's actually 30 or 33 grams even uh, lighter than the Vata 1. It just has some different materials, I suppose, but it is definitely lighter. You can definitely feel that it has a different type of latching mechanism for the battery, which is now one with the whole shell of the drone as opposed to protruding here on top from the Avata 1 shell. Uh, and this makes the drone a lot more aerodynamic. It makes it so much easier to, to go through gaps and, and just has this flatter design that helps you definitely uh, with the flying performance of the drone. When you take a look at the propellers, you will also see that they are similar size. They are three inch props. However, we have three blade props on the Avata 2 and we have five blade props on the Avata 1 and that creates different noise and we'll talk about the noise a little bit later in the video but that also changes the performance of the drone which I can say with a large amount of confidence is a lot better here on the Avata 2. 
Taking a further look at the Vata 2 from the back, we will see that now we have these two binocular cameras here on the back of the drone, just, uh, just around the Vata 2 name. And these are used to detect obstacles and keep the drone very stable in the air while uh, hovering and while also being flown uh, from uh, indoor uh, spaces to outdoor spaces, for example, uh, that these sensors will keep it more stable and it will allow it to, to perform better in the air. But these cameras are also being used for one new feature that has been introduced on the Vata 2 called Easy Acro. And Easy Acro is just some predefined movements that you can enable from the menu of the drone, from the goggles. And when you enable this mode, you will be able to quickly do a flip or a roll with the drone. You will be able to drift with it and kind of um, pass through an obstacle and uh, turn around and keep focusing on that obstacle while continuously flying backwards. It's a really cool predefined movement from the drone that is being executed with just a press of a button from the joystick of the drone. And it's that easy to create those movements that are usually a little bit harder to achieve uh, if you're still a beginner with an FPV drone. Now, obviously, we don't have anything like this on the Vata 1. This is some new feature that has been uh, introduced to make it easier for the beginners to get into the FPV, to get those shots that are a little bit harder to achieve uh, with just the press of a button and not having to worry about crashing because these uh, cameras will detect if uh, there is something from the back of the drone while it's... Uh, doing that maneuver and it will stop without crashing into it. So that's a big plus for the Vata 2. And I like the fact that DJI is trying to bring as many people as possible, especially the beginner ones, to the FPV hobby because it's it's great and it should be easy for them to, to start with that. Now, when it comes to the transmission system that both of these drones use, we have O3 on the Vata 1 and we have O4 on the Vata 2. So this I wouldn't really say is the biggest thing that we, we are seeing in terms of upgrades. Yes, there is more range, 10 kilometers versus 13 kilometers of max range in FCC mode. So yeah, three more kilometers if you're in FCC mode. However, that's not the biggest thing. You're never going to go that far with a Cinewop like this. It is mostly about performance where when the drone has more obstacles around and has to have that strong signal. And with the Vata 2, you now have instead of 50 megabits uh, of signal inside your goggles, it's raised to now 60 megabits per second. So you have 10 more megabits of kind of additional signal that you can use. As you all know, uh, when the signal drops below three or four, megabits per second, it's, it gets very sketchy and very choppy. So now we can extract a little bit more out of this drone because you can push it further with the better penetration that the drone has with the better range. You will have a little bit more distance to cover before the drone starts dropping the signal, which is great. And you know, 60 megabits also looks amazing inside the goggles. Speaking about the goggles, we now have different goggles as well. So these are the old DJI goggles 2 versus the new DJI goggles 3. And the main difference between those goggles is not only the transmission system, like I said, O3 and O4, but now we also have this forehead pad here on the front that makes it really comfortable for you to put these on your head. Uh, with this whole built-in strap, everything just fits together nicely and you have those little curtains here on the side that completely cover all sorts of light leaks so you never have to deal with that again. This completely covers all sorts of light that is coming from the side, from, from this side here and this side here. Usually when you put these goggles on, especially the older models, there's always a little bit something here that just, you know, you can see it when you put the goggles on. Now there is nothing like that anymore and everything is just very comfortable. Now, first, I didn't really like this forehead pad, but when you put them on and when you start flying with them for a little bit longer, then you start appreciating how perfect it fits on top of your face uh, and then you're, it's just comfortable. Now, besides that, besides the new forehead uh, strap, 
for head pad, excuse me, we now also have two additional cameras here on the front. Uh, which might be a gimmick for some people, but DJI is trying to, to make it easier for you if, if you have full comfort uh, with the goggles and you don't want to lose that, you can just enable the camera view and start doing something. Maybe you change the battery of your drone or change the props or check out your phone, um, make a phone call, or reply to some messages. You can do that while still uh, wearing the goggles without having, having to to remove them with these cameras here. Uh, they're that good, especially if the lighting around is good. If it's low light, maybe it will be a little bit more noisy and you won't see all the details. But if uh, you're outside, you're flying and there's something you need to take care of, you can still do that with the goggles on, uh, which is really, really convenient, but it's also a little bit funny uh, and, and unnatural. But you are going to get used to that. If you want to take advantage of that feature, you can do that with the binocular cameras uh, on the goggles on the front. Now let's talk about the remote controllers that you can use on these drones. And first of all, I don't have the full sized FPV controller that can be used on the Avata 2. It will be released a little bit later and I will have to buy that one myself as it wasn't included in the review unit that I got for the Avata 2. But it is going to be exactly the same as this one. This is the FPV remote controller 2 and it's the one that you can use on the Avata one. Uh, so it might be a little bit, uh, you know, confusing with the, all the numbers, uh, the Avata 1, the Avata 2, the FPV controller 2 and, and 3, but we will add another controller to the mix and that is this RC Motion Controller 3. This is the brand new remote controller that has been included in uh, the package with the Avata 2. And as you can see, this is a very small and tiny portable controller that is super ergonomic and very comfortable to hold in your hand. This is the thing that you will use to control the Avata 2 in case you don't want to, to buy this FPV remote controller separately. Uh, this will be sold separately as opposed to this which comes in the bundle with the drone. If you want to take advantage of controlling the drone with this, it's a lot of fun. It's actually super easy. You can give this to a complete beginner and they will be just fine after just a couple of minutes of getting to learn the controls and how to turn, how to give acceleration and you know, all of these, these little things. You have a joystick that you can use to go a little bit higher or lower. You can change the direction from here. You can change modes. You can start or stop the propellers or you can adjust the camera angle from here. You have all the controls literally in the palm of your hands and you have the accelerator here, which is a two step accelerator. You can be slow and steady with it. And when you uh, press it completely, it goes into full power mode and then gives you all the speed from the drone, uh, which by the way is a little bit different. Now we have the same speed from Avata 1 and Avata 2 in normal mode, which is eight meters per second. But we have 16 meters per second in sport mode for the Avata 2, whereas you have 14 meters per second in sport mode in Avata 1. So the, the Avata 2 is a little bit faster in sport mode and you can definitely feel that 16 meters per second is quite a lot. Uh, and of course, if you turn this drone and set it into manual mode where you unlock the full potential, the full speed of the drone, you can uh, get an even higher speed, I believe 24 meters per second, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's actually 27 meters per second. So quite a, a big difference in manual mode and they have the same speed in manual mode. So uh, no, not big difference uh, between the two, but big difference between the different modes that you have available on these drones. One thing that is really hard to showcase on video, and it's even more apparent now, especially that I've tried both drones right one after another, is the difference in the noise they make. It's such a big difference and it's such a relief to fly the Avata 2 because the noise it makes is, is just not that high pitched. It's not as annoying and when you go maybe 30 to 40, 50 meters away from you, as soon as you take off, you almost stop hearing it. And it's, it's uh, a lot less annoying for the rest of the people around as well. Um, and while I was flying the Avata 1, I could hear it from many, many hundreds of meters away. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not pleasant. It's not a pleasant feeling to know that you are kind of bringing 
awareness that there is a drone in the air everywhere you go. Whereas with the Avata 2, the difference is is very, very drastic and you almost can't hear it as soon as it takes off. So that's a great, great positive for the Avata 2 and I just wanted to mention that I could film with the microphone, I could show you uh, the sound they make, the noise they make while they take off, but the, the real thing, you cannot really showcase it on video. You have to hear it yourself. And trust me on that, the difference is massive. Now, of course, the more you push the throttle, the less battery you will have. And speaking about battery life, you have maximum flight time of 18 minutes on the Avata 1, whereas you have a maximum flight time of 23 minutes on the Avata 2. So five more minutes uh, in total for the Avata 2, which really depends uh, whether you will able even be able to, to get to those five minutes, it really depends how much throttle you, you use, how much uh, energy you are uh, depleting from the drone. But this is the maximum flight time that you can expect out of this drone. So still a massive upgrade. Five minutes is a lot of time when it comes to upgrading the battery life from such a small, tiny drone. And the reason why you have more battery life in this drone is not only the battery mechanism and the way that the battery is designed and also how it fits the drone, but also the fact that the drone is lighter uh, now with about 33 grams um, lighter than the Avata 1. So this plays a significant role in making the drone uh, last a little bit longer in the air. So those are great upgrades and I'm always welcoming such changes to make the drone more agile, more lightweight and more durable. Um, and, and give you more flight time in general. I just mentioned the word durable, so I have to speak about that very quickly as well. Durability is a big thing when it comes to flying these two drones because as we all know, mostly the beginners will try to fly with these drones when they have never flown an FPV drone before. So of course they have to be durable. And I can honestly say that both of these drones are simply amazing when it comes to being crash resistant, being able to sustain a lot of damage without breaking. Now, I don't know which drone is stronger, but I've had great, great results with both of these drones. I've crashed them many times, both of them already, even the Avata 2 and I still haven't even changed a prop on the Avata 2. It's that strong, it's that durable, and I'm flying it as hard as I can. And if I still haven't broken it, then that says volumes about the, the, the durability of this drone. And it goes the same way for the Avata 1. We've, I've seen so many different crashes and I've crashed it myself so many times, and the drone is still in one piece. So uh, DJI has done a great job uh, when it comes to durability and uh, crash resistance. So both of these drones are great. They're really isn't a winner here. They both win when it comes to, to that because they are very, very durable. And next I want to focus quickly on another upgrade that I almost forgot mentioning and that is the internal storage of the drone. Now the Avata 2 comes with 20 gigabytes of internal storage, which is great, but it gets filled up quite quickly. Now the Avata 2 comes with 46 gigabytes of internal storage, which of course can be upgraded with the, the fact that you can use an SD card as well. Of course, you can use an SD card on the Vata one as well. Uh, but 46 gigabytes is a lot more uh, when it comes to how much footage you can, uh, you can get on this drone before filling it up. And I always suggest you to not only rely on the internal storage, but also put an SD card inside. So if there is no more free space on your drone, you can simply switch to the SD card and you can start flying straight away without having to lose time and without uh, maybe losing the potential shot that you want to make. And finally, I want to talk about the price because even though prices changes dramatically all the time and there are almost always some type of discount available, some sort of promo that is uh, being uh, announced by DJI, now I'm happy to see that the Vata 2 is actually cheaper than the Vata 1, uh, which was a big, big surprise for me because products tend to always get more and more expensive as time uh, goes on, but the new Avata 2 is actually cheaper than Avata 1. So if you don't have a Vata 1 uh, and you're wondering whether you should splurge on it, uh, Maybe you should wait and get the Avata 2 straight away. Uh, but if you already own the Avata 1, maybe this video will help you decide whether the, the, the features that it has have been enough for you. Maybe the new features from the Avata 2 are the, the things that you're looking for when it comes to upgrading. Uh, maybe you won't need any of those things. It's really up to you. I really want to hear back from you down in the comment section below. Do you think the Avata 2 upgrades and updates are justified? Do you think 
the Avata 2 is much much better significantly better than the Avata 1 or it's it's just a basic upgrade coming from the Avata 1. Let me know down in the comment section below. I really want to hear back from you. Your feedback is always appreciated, so don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. With that being said, guys, this is everything I have for you today. I really hope this video has been informative enough so you can decide whether you want to upgrade coming from the Avata 1, whether you want to buy the Avata 2, or whether you just want to watch those videos without having to purchase anything afterwards. That also works. This is Mike from Drone Supremacy. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one very, very soon. Take care and ciao.